Hi viewers, this is uh, Vignesh Nathan from Agilent Technologies. Today I'm going to show you how to perform jitter measurements on the uh, 6000X InfiniVision series oscilloscope. The end product of this video, you will learn how to set up a TIE measurement, a TIE uh, smooth measurement, uh, and the spectrum of the TIE. And in case uh, you have not heard the term TIE before, it stands for Time Interval Error. And uh, it's the most basic measurement that you make on a digital signal because it compares the edge of the uh, received signal with an ideal edge and displays the delta time measurement. So based on that, you can get the spectrum of the TIE and also the histogram of the uh, TIE smooth down um, and the histogram will show you what sort of uh, jitter is in your signal. Alright, so let's start from default setup. And uh, my signal is on channel 4, so I'm going to turn off channel 1 and turn on channel 4. I'm going to adjust the uh, vertical amplitude of channel 4 to 50 millivolts per division. My signal is, by the way, a 100 millivolts uh, clock signal running at 15 megahertz and I'm going to adjust the time base setting to 2 microseconds okay now let's set the trigger to be on channel 4 and uh, moving the trigger level a little bit up. Helps trigger on the signal and now you can see there's a digital signal on the display. Alright, so now that that setup is complete, we can uh, start the jitter measurement setup. And you can do this easily on this oscilloscope because you have a front panel hard key called jitter. And if you press it, you get this uh, jitter uh, configuration window. The first thing you want to do is add a jitter measurement. And you have a few options here. But uh, the most basic jitter measurement is the uh, time interval error measurement. And since this is a clock signal, I'm going to pick clock TIE. And I'm going to leave um, the slope as rising and the units in seconds. But you do need to set up the clock recovery. So my signal is running at 15 megahertz. So I'm going to put it in semi-automatic and the method of the clock recovery is constant frequency so we can see all of the jitter and you need to change the uh, data rate 30 megabits per second uh, this is because uh, the data rate is usually twice the uh, frequency of the signal so since we're running 15 megahertz the data rate is 30 megabits per second Now, once that's done, um, you can turn on uh, the display for the TIE and the histogram and the spectrum. And uh, what I like to do is just hit auto setup on everything first. Now on the screen, you're starting to see uh, all these waveforms appear. And then uh, close out the configuration window and stop the oscilloscope. Uh, stopping the oscilloscope helps uh, 
helps you set the proper vertical scaling on all this uh, jitter waveform. Uh, and the scope, scope responds quicker to you changing those settings because it doesn't need to update the screen with new waveforms. So uh, if you press on the math button, you would see that the math two function shows the time interval error of the uh, of the clock signal that we have compared to that ideal clock that we recovered. So here I'm going to set the uh, vertical scale to 100 picoseconds. And the offset to negative 256. Picosecond. So since um, on this signal I have not introduced any uh, jitter, you only see a uh, random jitter. So the TIE is fairly is flat in general, its mean value, but you can see there's a, a random noise riding on. So now let's turn on the um, TIE that's been smooth. And uh, I'll select the smoothing points to be 11. And uh, I'm going to adjust the scale, the vertical scale, to 50 picoseconds. and uh, the offset to negative 57. Picosecond. So now you have the um, TIE and the TIE that's been smooth, uh, therefore re removing some high frequency noise on it. Uh, smoothing the TIE helps uh, you identify exactly the shape of the jitter uh, in, correla in correlation with time. Of course, uh, here I don't have any uh, sinusoidal jitter or triangular jitter in mo uh, injected. So you don't see any shape in the smooth TIE. Now let's see the spectrum of the uh, time interval error. And uh, I like to set it to decibels because uh, it shows more information. I'm also going to change the span because we do not need such a big span since our clock signal is at 15 megahertz so I'm going to set the span to 100 megahertz and the center frequency to be 50 megahertz also I'm going to adjust the uh, scaling of the uh, time interval error spectrum I'm going to adjust the vertical scaling to 50 dB per division and the offset to be uh, minus 225 dB. All right, so. Now we see the baseline uh, spectrum uh, without, with only random jitter in the signal. And how do you know it's random jitter? Well, usually you look at the histogram and you should see a Gaussian shape. Uh, what we see here is an incomplete uh, Gaussian histogram because we haven't collected enough data points. 
So uh, I'm gonna turn off the channel for because the oscilloscope will still update the uh, jitter uh, waveforms even with the channel off. And now I'm gonna let the oscilloscope run. That way you can build the data points and create a smooth Gaussian histogram. So now that we have uh, five or six acquisitions, uh, you can see that the histogram shape is looking a little bit smoother. And of course, uh, this is purely up to you on how uh, smooth you want the histogram to be. Of course, the smoother the histogram and the more data points you have, the more accurate the statistical uh, measurements will be from the oscilloscope. Alright, now I'm going to add a sinusoidal jitter into the signal and uh, you will see changes to the TIE waveforms, both the normal one and the smooth one and you will also see something else a, a spur in the uh, spectrum, as well as the histogram changing its shape. So I'm going to clear the dis display, and I also want to reset the histogram. So I click on the jitter uh, configuration button again, and then uh, this button right here will bring you the histogram controls. You can press on reset histogram. Thank you for watching this random jitter demonstration on the 6000X series InfiniVision oscilloscope. If you want to find out more uh, about the sinusoidal jitter, please watch part 2 of the video. Thanks.